general principles that would drive your choice of antibiotics. Bacterial infections is what we're talking about. And the first sort of large categories are what kind of a host are you dealing with? And so, for example, is it an elderly person? Is it a person with diabetes? Is it someone who's been recently in a hospital or care facility where they may have been exposed to more resistant bacteria? Uh, is it known if they're HIV infected or not? Is it a cancer patient on chemotherapy? These are all factors that would figure in the way you would think about how careful you want to be with antibiotics how aggressive you want to be, and also what spectrum of things you need to think about. So the first thing is the host, and that's the person you encounter the first time you see the patient. The next is figuring out what their syndrome is. Is it a pneumonia? Is it a urinary tract infection? Is it a meningitis? Is it an endocarditis? And are any of them associated with a full-blown sepsis syndrome? And these things would all determine the relative acuity of a situation which would determine how aggressive you have to be with the antibiotics to start with. Those would be sort of your rough initial syndromes. And then once you have narrowed down to syndromes, you need to think what are the major pathogens that could be playing a role in, in those syndromes. And now for a lot of them in these acute cases, there's a fair amount of overlap. And the key bacteria you want to think about is, do I have to worry about Staph aureus? and particularly MRSA. Do I have to worry about the gram-negatives, the so-called Enterobacter ACA or Pseudomonas? I'm particularly worried about drug-resistant gram-negatives. Do I have to think about Bacteroides fragilis if it's an abdominal infection? Do I have to think about the Enterococcus? Do I have to think about Legionella, antibiotics that you're going to want to uh, use? And the key there is, again, what are the key bacteria that, that you need to cover so you need to think both, what do I need to cover, and you need to also kind of keep in the back of your mind, what are the things that I'm leaving out that I can worry about, but I don't need to com completely use every antibiotic pharmacy to treat this particular patient. So knowing what to cover, as well as to be aware of what you n might not be optimally covering, is a key element. And so that goes back to the bacteria I mentioned before, you know, MRSA, gram-negative, particularly drug-resistant gram-negative bacteria, are, and Bacteroides fragilis would be probably high on your list. The Enterococcus a little bit less so. Listeria is another bug that gets trotted out a lot on exams. We don't see a lot of it, but it is one of those that, is, that a lot of antibiotics have holes for. So the Enterococcus and Listeria are, are two that you should think about as ones that you might not be covering, but they may not be that important. So you can leave them out. When we talk about atypical pneumonia, what we really want, are concerned about, is Legionella. Mycoplasma is another atypical, but it really doesn't present very acutely. It's a more benign presentation and, and doesn't require an immediate intervention antibiotic-wise. So the next thing, when you're dealing with a, a patient who's quite ill coming in to the hospital, the choice of antibiotics, you're going to want to pick antibiotics that are primarily cidal. Antibiotics that are um, cidal are actually bactericidal, that means they kill the bacteria. The easiest ones to think about are the ones that would actually screw up the cell wall of the bacteria. And when you screw up the cell wall, stuff can get in and out and the bacteria might be lysed and actually killed. Static means that you actually are interfering with the metabolism of the bacterium, but you may not necessarily kill it, because as the drug wears off, the bacterium might still be able to uh, divide. It's been inhibited, but not killed. And a lot of the antibiotics that interfere with protein synthesis, that sort of interfere with the ribosomes, many of those are, st are static, because they interfere with protein synthesis without actually killing the organism. Cidal antibiotics then would be cell wall active ones or ones that interfere with DNA replication. So quinolones would be an example of those, an antibiotic that interferes with DNA replication. The exception for this one is are the aminoglycosides. The aminoglycoside antibiotics do interfere with the ribosomal function, but they do it in such a way that they end up screwing up the cell wall. So they aren't just hanging out on the ribosome, they actually cause screwed up messages which lead to ultimately cell wall damage and, and that's why the aminoglycosides are toxic and, and cidal. The second uh, issue of antibiotic safety conditions, so one is static versus cidal. So anybody who comes into the emergency room or is in the hospital, you're going to want to use something that's going to be cidal. If you're in, you know, working in an ambulatory clinic and 
people are walking in and out, then static drugs could be perfectly fine. Because the principle of a static drug is that even though you're arresting the organism and you might not kill it, the immune system might kill it. So that you're actually just stopping the growth enough so that the immune system can take care of it. But for people who are quite ill and come into the hospital, usually it's because the immune system has started to fail, in which case you want to rely on cytal antibiotics.